Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Screen Chronicles. I'm Steve. With me, as always, is Colby, now Argentinian. And today we have on a very special guest. You likely know him as Brezel from season five of The Last Kingdom on Netflix now. Harry Anton, thank you for coming on today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, Harry, we thought you were a great addition to season five. Uh, your character has this very daunting presence and uh, really excited to talk to you about it. But first of all, how are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. I'm, uh, I'm just in London at the moment. Um, pretty relaxed. Not, not really up to that much. Cool. You got me up earlier than normal, you know, it's 11 o'clock. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Late start here. Late start. No, no. I but for know. everyone uh, watching or listening today, we are going to be getting into some spoilers for season five of The Last Kingdom. So if you haven't seen it, this is your spoiler alert now. Um, everyone dies. Seen... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> everyone. That's the Tom Holland spoiler alert for uh... Infinity War. <laughs> Infinity War. <laughs> yeah. Everyone gets um, Infinity War. Yeah, but before we get too deep into The Last Kingdom, Harry, uh, how did you get into acting? Um, my story is like really gradual and really like, like almost all most of the majority of actors in London or um or England that are, I think are very similar to myself where I just um auditioned for a bunch of uh, acting schools and then got into one and then um then came out of it about a year later and then just slowly slowly built up um a career through like short films and and terrible plays above pubs that no one saw for literally like years and then um, it just gradually got better and better and I got slowly got slightly more parts and uh, maybe a better agent. And it was like a real, um, you have snakes and ladders up here in America. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yes. Just, <laughs> yeah. just like that. And then maybe there was one that went down and then it was just like, so it's. Um, oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So it was just a really gradual, really gradual arc, really. Gotcha. What, what was a terrible play? What, what Like what yeah. made oh, a terrible so play? Dumb. So I, uh, what's, what's been really nice is that someone texted me earlier and they were like, oh, you were meant to, um, you, you, you always belonged in, in like Vikings era because I, for, for whatever reason, I think I've, I've got like a, a relatively deep voice and I can grow a beard basically. Mm -hmm. And act, it's like, acting is like super simple. Both of you, if you were actors, they would say the same thing. You know, if like, if you were like a re like reasonably in shape guy and they're like, yeah, yeah Viking. <laughs> and um. Sick. And one of the plays, one of the plays I did was was called Vikings at Helgeland by oh, um yeah. oh he's this famous playwright. I can't not know the playwright. I need a I need a yeah, yeah. Um, let's have a look. But it's funny because he's he's a famous playwright and he just had no business writing this play. <laughs> like it's the kind of thing that just wouldn't happen now because it, yeah, Henrik Ibsen. So he he's done he's done some amazing amazing play. Fucking hell, was that Henry Gibson? No way. <laughs> <laughs> it can't have been. It was so bad. The, um, he wrote Henry Gibson wrote some better plays than that. But um, but uh, you know, like uh, he he was he was he was it was all in his imagination, and it was basically like a Shakespearean version of these Vikings, and they were all really posh and English. And they were like falling in love and like it, there was no real fighting. And because we had no budget, like we didn't do any rehearsals for the fighting. Oh so we were like, we were like on stage in this tiny arena with like these like really fake swords doing like <laughs> maybe the worst sword fighting of all time. We had to do it in slow motion because it was not safe or something. Oh no. And, um, <laughs> but, but my, but my character, he looked all right. He was like, he looked really similar to, um, to Bressel genuinely. Like it had yeah. same. What was the name of your character? Uh, Sigurd, Sigurd the Strong. Oh, okay. There you gotcha. go. Cool, cool. But um, oh. there was one. There's one performance we did where there was four people in the audience. I think. Did they like <laughs> it? How did how'd they respond? Oh, yeah. yeah, they were like, <laughs> <laughs> "Well done." It I mean, that's like kind of well, cool, though. That's kind of like you yeah. know, like a lot of like stand-up comics. They like start out and you know, dingy places and they, they get ripped on a lot and stuff. So maybe that helped make you though, you know, maybe that made you. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, yeah, if I was, I, I mean, going into drama school and stuff, I was like relatively egotistical and, and thought I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to make it as an actor. And then nothing brings you down to earth and 
performing like an absolute piece of shit play <laughs> being watched by four people who don't give up like who just don't care about you at all <laughs> you know like, like i'm giving you gold and they're like we don't care you're just wow. just they're like yeah nothing will bring you down to earth <laughs> and i did that for years as well i did that for like a couple of years wow yeah and so how did you go from that then and then get involved in the last kingdom yeah right there was times when i was like this is not going to happen <laughs> like this is this is all i'm going to do they so they it was weird how like there's always like a through line though right so there's um i did that play and someone actually no there's no through line with that play that play I oh, know it was so, so. So one of my old teachers from acting school came and saw it, and that, this was about about three years out from acting school. And I'm um, obviously I'd given if the play, I didn't think the play was great, but I'd given everything to it. Like I I'd right. really like right. And and, and I've, I've I've always I've always thought you you have to be good. You have to try and be good no matter what you get. So I so I, I was thinking so I was still like I mean I, was, I think I was still all right in it. And mm -hmm. um and he came and. I think he basically took a bit of pity on me, you know. He gave me, he gave me like a job as like um, an, uh, but essentially an extra in one of his. He was he was a much better actor, much more successful actor. Like I said, he was a teacher I used to work with, and he was working for a company called the Guildford Shakespeare Company, mm -hmm. and he was able to. Um, he, he gave me an audition basically for um for a role in this new play that was like paid and it was a much higher level, and um that kind of started the ball rolling a little bit because it, it it allowed me to jump up a little level and then um cool. from that i got a job as um playing macbeth for a for a decent theater literally off the back of that and then um and then i was able to get like a slightly better agent and then with a the slightly better agent i basically said from the get-go i was like look i don't want to be in theater i want to be on film and tv that's always where i've dreamed of that's what i love like let's just aim for that Cool. And then cool. it was a case of just slowly getting like one or two. Like if you look at my like mm -hmm. IMD or whatever, my career, it's just lots of little guest parts on TV. Like, you know, six or seven of like literally roles I'll be in for a day. And then through that, I just, you always get like, I always get like auditions for like something similar to The Last Kingdom. But it just so happened that I, it, it, it worked out. You know, it was, it, sometimes, sometimes it's really, sometimes it's really like, you know, it's just so much luck. I obviously turned up to the audition and they were like, yeah, this is, this is the, he has what we wanted for the part rather than yeah. like, I nailed it. You know, it was more like, oh, oh yeah, okay. yeah. Well, I told you, I always think that because, like, because all actors are like, are good. Like, <laughs> they all try hard most of the right. time, you know, and, but a lot of the time it's like the person who's casting has to have something in mind. Right, and, right. And you might just you might just walk in and they'd be like, yes, this like a puzzle, <laughs> like it just fits right. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. And were you already a fan of The Last Kingdom? No, I wasn't, but I no. But, but I sh but I should have been. You know, like the you know, like the list of TV programs you have to watch. Oh my god, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it was one, it was on the list. So a couple of a couple of my mates had said, like, because it's right up my street, you know. I like I really like action, I like I like always like history and yeah. I, I love the, um, I love, uh, I'm quite easy going with TV. So the idea that there was a hero fighting against all these people, I'm like, yeah, okay, that, that right. sounds great. Yeah. So, right. so when they, when I, when my, my first audition for it, which is about a month before I got the, um, I got the, the part, as soon as I got the audition through, I was like, right, this is, I know this is going to be fun homework to, to like to do. Yeah. So I, I watched it and I just I like absolutely loved it. I just loved it. I yeah. watched it. I watched it with um. I even found out I got auditioned for a, a, a different person in it, and I didn't get it. Okay. It was like it was a slightly. It was just a slight. I think it was like a slightly like smaller role, like ever so slightly, mm -hmm. and um, I didn't get it, and I was really disappointed. But then I carried on watching the last thing. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I've actually I'm actually really enjoying this TV show. I'm just okay. gonna finish it. And then um, they called me back like a week later and said, look, we've got this other part. Do you want to audition for that? And I was like, yes. And by that point, I'd been able to watch the whole thing. Nice. Cool. So you genuinely loved it. Even when you thought, maybe I'm not getting into the show, you just genuinely loved the show. 
That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, that's you had awesome. mentioned though yet that you were put in as you did look like people were like, oh, you're a Viking. And I have to say, when I first saw Brezel, I did think he was Dane. Actually, just he looked very Viking looking. And like, oh, yeah. he's a he's a Saxon. He's with Ethelhelm here. What, so one of the cool things they that he, the um the makeup and the costume team did and like links to Bresso as a role is he's he's re- he's relatively individual. Mm-hmm. Like there's not a side. So he basically he was like, no, why would I look like? So in terms of facial hair and stuff, he's like, now why would I look like a Saxon? I don't yeah. I don't really care about. That. I'm not a part of. I don't really feel affiliated with England in that way. So his look is more similar to like say like Mark or Arnus, who, who yeah. are kind of slightly nomadic with how they they, they, they dress right. like, oh, it, it's literally like being fashionable. They're like, actually, yeah, it's quite cool to Vikings look cooler. But um, there's a, there was always a really cool thing which we decided on, which was, um, have you seen Sin City? Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Mm, in me, Sin yeah. City, uh, Mickey Rourke's character, Marv, he kills people and then he takes their stuff. So he's like, oh, I fancy a bit of that. Yeah, I'll have that coat. Yeah. So we we thought that my um my costume would literally have just been taken from people that I killed and was like yeah okay I like his coat mm. I'll put on his Ooh. so the chances of so I look like a Viking because I'd killed loads of them yeah oh that's <laughs> sweet and I was that's like yeah super cool this this works this works for me yeah and like you said you're you know you're not on a side you're sort of like a mercenary right like yeah. you do what you know I think you have a line saying like. Uh, the best god the people serve is silver or something like that no, or, like uh, mon- no it's a done silver is a god of all men yeah 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 S- silver is the god of all men right um which i think describes your character perfectly and i feel like yeah. ethelhelm uh you work with adrian schiller a lot keeps kind of gradually handing you bigger bags of silver like every time it seems <laughs> yeah, yeah there was the, there was a moment where we had to decide though that i became i became emotionally involved in yes. in his character so and it was um after I think uh oh yeah a spoiler but after the um uh, the queen dies or exactly. was murdered it, that's when I there was actually a moment when I was like oh shit because actually up until that point I was like I was like a jobbing actor or like I was like just a good I was one of the best hitmen out there totally. then and and and, Eth- and our thing Ethelhelm was like he knew oh that Bressel guy he'll just do whatever you want and he'll just he'll just fucking sort it right out and um right so then. But there should have been so there was an arrogance with me because I was like, you know what, I'm just doing this for money. You, you, I, I had to think about like, you're not my boss, basically. And then, then it came, it just so happened when I got emotionally involved, I also became more under his wing. I became mm. more like, like you know, there's a scene in the um in the camp when I'm just basically like his bitch. He goes, <laughs> he, yeah. he goes, he goes, go go sort out the men. I was like, okay, cool. But what happens is because I'm really apart apart from the Harry. The Athelstan mess up at the the beginning. Right, I'm like, right. I'm very good at my job, and I've yeah, always been. Yeah. I think I've been. I think I was always in the army, and I was. I was always like, oh, don't, I don't. I'm too good for this. I don't need to be following your orders. So there's there's a point where I'm just suddenly in charge of all his men. Yeah, he's like he's yeah. like, are the men That's ready? Crazy. I was like, well, the men are fine. <laughs> I was like, I'm not like just an assassin, but I'm just obviously like pretty efficient at loads of different things. I was like, yeah, cool. I'll just go decide where those 50 men go for the battle that like, no worries about it that's what i was thinking when uh it was at at the lake battle there where yeah. he, he does say all right get get the men ready and yeah. you even call you get a shield wall call which we love yes. our shield wall calls um yeah. so i was i what i was thinking that too i was like oh does he know everyone then you know because he's just like shield wall and everyone's just like this i mean i would listen too but i mean brezel looks like a badass so yeah i'm gonna uh, mess with brezel so my backstory was yeah, that I was, I mean, I probably fought with a couple of these guys and they knew they would have known me as like a, like kind of like a, like a mini, like Uhtred. Cause, cause sure. I, so in, within, within the English army, I would have just decided to go off by myself and do my own thing. And then all of a sudden in my head, I would have, I made myself way cooler than I was. I had like Aragon in my head a lot of the time. <laughs> nice. but, like, but you know, like, you know, like, I would have just split off. I think, say, early, so mid. I reckon I always would have been in in battles, basically, my whole life, and then I would have split off like early twenties and started to take on more work as like security for hire, and then that would have right. never to that would have inevitably gone. Actually, I'm just better at killing, and I don't have I don't really have that um, fear of. I just know that it's part of my life, and it's and I'm, I'm I can I can deal with that. 
And then I think I would have started to gain a reputation as actually he's not he's not security. That guy is a, like an assassin. Mm. It would have been really, but through that period, I think I would have just I would have garnered the respect of people within that kind of world, as in they would have known, oh, that guy, you listen right. to that guy, and also because he's been on the front line with us. So he knows what he's talking about. So I think Ethelhelm probably, because he's smart as fuck, obviously, he yeah, he, he probably had like an idea that if I can get if I get this guy, there's also a point down the line where he would be comfortable running running my um my men basically. I think I think he would have you know like he would have hired me for that reason. My CV would have been like can kill people, <laughs> also comfortable in charge of a number of men <laughs> like yeah. Sarcastic, what, horrible. <laughs> what was that like at the the battle too, where you do get to call shield wall? I mean, you're pretty yes. much just. I mean, Ethelhelm's pretty much just like protect me, and then and you're, <laughs> you're you're guarding him. But I mean, that there is a whole bunch going on around you. There's still guys hacking and chopping away. What was that like at the the lake battle there? The lake battle was the lake battle was amazing. The director Paul Paul Wilmhurst is like mm-hmm. the reason he had that block of. um block of episodes so those, those three was because of i think lots of reasons but one of the reasons was his expertise at telling a story through the battle and and that battle was so hard i think because there's about five different storylines happening and not unlike an event similar to like an avengers kind of thing that there's, there's like you know everyone's coming in from a different angle with different reasons so like harry harry gilby's character athelstan has yeah. his own little john snow moment within that and then there's right. Uhtred with his band, and then there's um, Sig Trigger, and then you know, and and in between that, me and Ethelhelm, and so we, we filmed it for like weeks. I think it was like three weeks or something. But oh, they, wow. um, but our bit was quite heavily, like, no, it, it has to be. There has to be a certain level of um, uh, what's it called, uh, improvisation. Hmm. Okay. Because just because you can't, you have to. The story's on the page, but you have to tell that, and obviously there's bits. That are left out so it's like Ethelhelm escapes through a, a guard basically and then right. Paul kind of was like this is how we're going to do that but then basically he kind of says all right action and you're working with like 50 other people and so I am at I am actually managing that shield wall <laughs> yeah <laughs> like exactly you know, the, the extras and the stunt crew are amazing on this and they basically they have a shorthand where they like they just know what to do so you, you, so they just go, they just go with you a little bit. So and, but everyone, it felt pretty real because I'm wow. in the middle. There's, there's like 15 guys around me. They're pushing into me because they're really good. And they're like, yeah, pushing to me and stuff. And I'm, I'm, I'm like pulling them and kind of organizing this wall. But then, what's what was dangerous about it and what I was like, I had to poke my sword over the top, and in a way that was like aggressive, but also not like. Yeah. Spearing in the head. Yeah. I have to, there's like I have to like walk this really thin line of like looking really aggressive, but also like just not wanting to like <laughs> find anyone. Like, I, which is the opposite to what Bresser will be thinking, because he'd be like, yeah, fuck you, like <laughs> right, instead right, he, right. Instead, he was like, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's like I'm also I'm I'm not one of those guys that just like I like love to lose myself in a character for sure, but I've done okay. so many. I've done so many fight scenes and stuff that I know when it's fight time, there has to be, you have to be aware of yourself. You have, you, you, you have to, you have to understand that like there's a limit to how much you can, you, you just, not, it will, it will just, everyone works better is if you're, if you haven't gone a hundred percent, you know, there's, there's times when you need to, but then also it, just because of fear to work, you have to make, you have to make, this be like a dance but one also mm. physically selling it a hundred percent so like so it has you have to be really careful but what also being so you have to kind of be really aware of yourself to make it work and not like accidentally gotcha. shop something head off, i think gotcha and for that when you found out you were going to do a shield wall call which mm. to steve and i is like one of some of the most epic moments i was parked up i was parked up yeah like to you when you found out you got to do a shield wall call did that mean anything to you at the time having watched the show were you excited about that and then did you prepare for any particular shield wall so i call i know i can shout so i'm like right i won't always get to shout and obviously Bressel was really like kind of down here but um 
I was like, it was off the cuff as well. It was like, okay, okay in order to get, in order to get, Paul was like, in order to get everyone here, you need, we need to shout something. And he was, he looked at, he looked at like um the producers, and he was like, I think we need a shield wall shout. I think Harry, you need a shout shield wall. Let's let's film okay. that now. And I was like, but that's so that's <laughs> that's my preferred way of doing that because I would I, totally. I, I, I would have also you can't practice a shield wall. Like you're not going to be in your hotel room and be like shield wall. Like it wasn't, <laughs> hey, listen, <laughs> yeah, like, like, there's no there's no way. Where would you you would just you can't do that. So like I the lobby, so I guess, the, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe the lobby. I, I, you have to go I, outside. I was, Everyone I was on floor two. <laughs> I was staying in the same um, next in the same room next to. Uh, Mickey Stolt, who plays Rognavald, Rognavald, I'm so bad. Rognavald, yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, I could hear him most nights, like doing running through his lines, and he was yeah. just yelling at like, the top of his voice. That's awesome. Yeah, and obviously it was good because I'm not going to knock on his door and go, "Can you keep it down a bit, mate?" I was just like, "Yeah, that's cool, that's cool." He was like, Rah! and I was like, "Okay, sweet." But um, but I, yeah, so like, the shield wall, it was one of those things. I'm that kind of stuff. I'm like, oh, I'm super confident with like yeah give me that shit I'll, I'll just love it and and i was just like i just it, it was I, I knew what was happening to the point actually where i thought it was so off the cuff that i didn't think I, it was going to make it in i oh. was like i was like i feel a little bit like i was like um, do i deserve a shield wall i was like because because you know they've always it's, it's the, the characters that have done it have been like quite big time and i was like it for me that was that would be like i don't know top top one or two moments of mine on the show for me personally i was like yeah cool i get to yell shield war as loud as i can amongst a bunch right. of yeah it was really cool that's awesome yeah like we uh i don't know we, we like value those shield wall calls for oh, some yeah. reason and, and we're definitely you know when we do our recap of that episode we're going to highlight that shield wall call because there's not a ton of them in the season yeah. uh but it's just iconic was... to the show i mean that's what yeah. got us into it i think i mean i think i've We've we've seen people making shield wall formations in other movies and shows and stuff, but I mean it's so it, iconic for the Last Kingdom. I mean the first season, especially with when the first time the Danes did it, um, and, yeah. and then when Uhtred's teaching everyone how to do it, you know, it just that's something I'm always looking yeah. for. I'm always like, I want more. Yes, yeah, that's, that's, that but that that's like the superhero bit, isn't it? It's like the it's that yeah. that's the Last Kingdom's Avengers Assemble. Exactly. I was yeah. going to say it's like Avengers Assemble. It's like. Uh... Yeah, totally. The thing I enjoyed most in the show was when it was, which I think the fans do as well, is when it's it's uh, Mark Arnus and Alex like running into battle. You know, when they're yeah they're together, and you're like, okay, cool, yeah, this is the this is the bit I've been waiting for. The politics mm -hmm. is great, but like, <laughs> let's see some fighting. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it, it's such the show is such a good combination of everything, even humor. Mm -hmm. It even has a, a lot of good humor. Uh, and that's why I think we love the show so much. It has like almost every element that we could ask for in a show. And the battles are especially a strong element, like you say. Now, your character, Brezel, um, I don't think he was in the books. Am I mistaken? No, he wasn't. Like, um, so were you given liberty to create that backstory that you told us about a little bit earlier for him? Or was that something they, they gave to you? Or that's that's what always that's always what I would do because because okay. for me it's like like I wrote like, like not like I, so I, I think pads and like, I reckon about two of those like hundred page pads just on dr like drawing like, my backstory and like and and working it out and deciding where I was coming. But for all for all my scenes, I was I was really I knew I knew everything about why I was there, you know, and what he's done yeah. before. And and it was more like it was an opportunity, and and I I was blessed with time because I had. It was it was a curfew at the time in Budapest, and I was in my hotel wow. room, and I was like, and because it was a it was like a real big opportunity for me, I just made sure I left like no stone unturned. So I just I just, I just sorted out that whole whole backstory, and because like, the backstory is something that like is yours, because a lot of acting is you have to really you're serving the story, and you listen to the director, right. and you decide. But the backstory is something that can no one can like. like okay, I mean they can. They can take stuff. They can take stuff away from you, but it's like, nah. I know my backstory. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. No. I got you. I, I know what he's done, and, uh, and it will help. It will help your. It help. I think it helps me to like. Just yeah. to, to know why you're saying what you're saying. I think is really important. 
Yeah. And after hearing the backstory that you told us, like, I, I feel like it makes so much sense for your yeah. character because he seems super wise, you know, like you, you say the part where he messed up with, with Ethelstan at the beginning, but he heard Uhtred calling and I, and we talk about in our episode one recap, we're like, that's just smart. Like Uhtred's coming, <laughs> yeah. just run. We would too. Like, that's, yeah. don't, don't mess with that. Um, but He's, also you, you sort of second guess Ethelhelm a lot. You're sort of like, are you sure you want to do that? Like, oh, that's going to start a war. There's a lot of moments. Yeah. But usually the it, silver outweighs. The... Yeah, that would be so, it, so I can be controlled. But, but, but the, um, the, uh, the, the, one of the reasons I had for running away was the chances of me dying when Utrecht's coming are, are high. Like, like he's the best. He, I'm not an idiot. And I'm like, exactly. and also I'm not like, and I've, I've survived this long because of those decisions. Right. Well, I'm like, look, one on one with Utrid equals death, but then right. one on one on three because I could hear the others as well, and I, I was aware they were together. Yeah, I, I, I like, I, I'm not, I, I'm not a warrior for for like passion, or for like for my for my country. I don't care about that. I just want my money and go. So if if right. like, I don't, I'm not like afraid of dying. It just doesn't make sense. <laughs> right. So I'm, exactly. So, so I'm like, nah, you know what? Yeah. yeah yeah so there is there is and that's so in order to he's like street wise basically so there's yeah. not there's not a lot of heroism to him he because he, he, he will he will choose the the um the easiest way to kill someone the quickest way to kill someone and he will only do it if it makes sense but the um right the wise thing the wise thing was really important because he starts to there's a bit of me in there's a lot of me in him in terms of like i don't like anyone telling me what to do <laughs> like, that, that, like i will i will obviously i'm polite and stuff and i'll, I'll say yeah, it, right. but like but it, and, and he and he has he has that because he's like look it's that kind of thing of like I've, i mean i've worked in bars and pubs for so long and it gets to the point where you know better than the owners because you've been on the front line for for, mm. for, for long. you've but you've done the shifts for longer than they have and you know what you know what it's like on a busy saturday night and you don't need right. to listen to them and and it gets to the point where they will listen to you and i think that's what's that's what ethel helm and Bressel is because he's like he's like well of course i'll listen to this guy he's 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 smart enough to the stuff he's saying and he he knows he i, I can i ethel helm's smart enough to go oh this guy has knowledge i'll, I'll take i'll right. take some of them right. speaking of uh, you and ethel helm too i mean there were like you said you did get emotionally involved at some level because after you tell him the news that, hey, you know, you sent us to kill uh, one person. I, I told the man exactly what to do, but uh, your daughter ended up dying and he goes to kill himself then. And you like save his life and give him like an emotional, like motivational talk to to like, keep going. <laughs> he like, like transforms. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he like crazy. transforms in that scene. Oh, my God. He, he was amazing. Um, that was like that. Me and Adrian really got on as well, but we also okay. had a real, we had a real competitive, as in like, you needed to be in the room with, with Adrian, as in like you could, like he was like he was like by the way I've I've done this for a long time I know what I'm doing, if you want gotcha. to, if you you got to, you have to like, you have to bring it basically otherwise he'll just like flatten you, like, <laughs> and um, right. what was really nice was though he, specifically with those with those scenes. We met up and we had a we had a, a couple of beers and a, and we and we 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 really really like talked about it and talked about where he's coming from and what he's feeling, and I think he was I think he he needed to know as well that like that seems really important to give it to him, so as in like it's his it's his emotional arc and you need to be able to to understand that essentially my job there was to kind of make sure Push. that that yeah, yeah. yeah that story is told in the right in the right in the right way. So understanding where he's coming from and stuff, and he but he was um, but and and it's in, it was interesting because that relationship mirrored the on screen relationship. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, it was like halfway through the shoot, and he was take. I was we were getting closer, and um, and I and we were understanding it was more of a partnership than we first thought, and we had, and it was it was interesting how, and, and oh, that could, that only had those scenes could only happen because. There was like a comfort between us and we understand we understood each other and by that point we'd done about 12 scenes together and which is the equivalent of like 
you know we spent like a month together and and so it was just nice to know that oh we can yeah we can do this we can do this scene quite easily totally totally and i like how you mentioned earlier about that part where your character sort of switches from businessman to now you're emotionally uh, involved in this situation um, yeah. and i think like you go from like you say like when you show up and talk to uh finn and, and you're very business like you're very like you know we must they must come before the king but as soon as you find um ale fled that's when like i feel like your voice like is that gritty yell and you start separating them and we get into this um small uh battle massacre massacre yeah it was definitely a massacre at rumkova here um, at rumkova yeah. and um yeah could you maybe talk about that scene a little bit because yeah. by the way we're also a little bit mad at you um <laughs> i hope you know yeah. uh, all our fans are mad i was watching kidding. i was watching last night and you just you kill off baby baby <laughs> monk and i was just like baby. oh no how am i gonna go i read that and i was like Oh fuck! <laughs> I was like, I, you know, he's like up there with old home, old home instead of in, in terms of the, the people that you don't want to kill off. <laughs> yeah, you know, like he's super high. He's just yeah. like yeah, golden. Yeah, yeah. But it was my. Um, but they couldn't so have just ref- no. <laughs> couldn't have just refused and forced them to change the script. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just took myself instead. It did. Was, it um, did serve for an amazing moment in the show. It was just sad. Yeah. It was so sad. But, so I had I had like had this thing with that that um the moment of seeing her dead. Mm-hmm. I turned like I yeah I, I went red. You know when you can't you've you've lost yourself now. Your head's right. gone basically. I, I played I played football all my life and and rugby all my life and all that kind of stuff. And there there is like a point where like your adrenaline goes shoot, mm-hmm. and then you're like you're no longer making decisions from a from a place of like calmness. So I, so right. I, and, and there was a couple of the, the couple of reasons that I had was like the reason my thing changes. Is I, I think I was I, I made this elaborate backstory, but yeah, I was briefly totally in love. love. I was briefly in love, and then my wife and son got murdered, basically. And and mm-hmm. that 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 kind of helps me. So that say that was like what ten years previously. Sure. That kind of help. That kind of helps me go. You know what? Fuck this. In like a real like. Uh, rick and morty kind of way that was a massive defining moment for me to kind of go oh i'm like this now mm, and i think and i think until i saw and also i don't really like ethelhelm i could take it i could take him i could take him or leave him before that point right but then but then once they've killed his 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 um his daughter i was like oh i don't know once once she's once she's dead it's like oh we've i know it was my kind of my doing but it's like Oh shit! Something's crossed over, and I'm probably really annoyed at myself. And I'm like, I, I've got, I, I, I know that, like, going into that after, after she's dead, I, th- I actually think he could, he could try and kill me now. So, I, so part of me is like, all that shock and all that stuff with PTSD shit of seeing the daughter dead yeah. has brought it straight back for me. And then the flip side of this, this is, I need to double down now because I have fucked up twice now, and I need to clean up this mess. And the only way I know how to clean up mess is by just fucking killing everyone oh. <laughs> and then that scene where you walk into the um to kill all the danes into that room it's so uh i don't know what it reminds me of like some kind of thriller movie like when you walk in like slowly kind of holding your dagger and it's just like oh my god you don't even see what happens you don't see what ha- i'm glad well you you um young utrid saw what happens hmm. uh, he's just he's Oof. just amazing hey, i'm but, uh, he to the um Finn's like he is such of like a visceral actor. So it, it made so much more sense. It's like, no, just put the camera on him and have his face portray what's happening. And that's like that's an that's a really hard thing to do to, to believably like a lot yeah. of men struggle with it, but to to believably be that shocked and sensitive and and be taking all of that horribleness on and he's he sells it really mm-hmm. but, um but uh, but what, what what's really what's no, it's not I mean it's not frustrating but was there was a scene where i i step out after and i'm yes. i'm covered in blood and um 
we just didn't it, we just didn't use it because it, it stopped you know because it needed to be, needed uh. to be but um but there was literally a scene when i come out and i'm like that and i'm just dripping but um but that, that there's um we were also we were talking for a while and, and again paul paul said this and he was like a lot of these guys for at this point in time some of them would see this like getting to fight you know they would their lives wouldn't yeah. be that great and you get such an you'd get such an adrenaline rush and a kick and some of them would be like oh yeah saturday let's go kill some people mm. and um i think i think there's a part of there's a part of me that just loved it like a sport and then yeah. and, and once once all my basically that's okay you don't have anything morally holding you back now the queen's dead you you, you you're unleashed you get to do whatever you want and i think the unleash is, is scary because it unleashes a side to him, which is actually like just pure enjoyment of it. Right. Right. Like as, as in, I'm not, I'm not killing at, at that point. Really. I'm, I don't have to murder all those people in the, in the shed. There's nothing. No one right. said that, but I'm just like, Oh, there's an opportunity here. I can just, I can, I can do it, which is again, which is terrifying. It's like, it's like, that, yeah, um, it is terrifying. Like, like I said, that walk you have in there, like that slow walk when you're approaching those people was like, oh my god! It's like Ma- Mike Myers coming in to just for the slaughter here, Holy or even just moly. when you first show up too, and it's just how like business like you're talking to fit in with all your guys. Like you guys look just look all so menacing, but then you're just standing like we're here for this, and that's what we want. You know, we want we yeah. just want uh, the Danes response. Just give it over. Yeah, just give it. And over. yeah, as well, he you could just see Mark. He's like. Yeah, he 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 was saying he was saying all of it, you know, like straight away he was like, "You're here to kill everyone. Give me a second while I try and <laughs> yeah, exactly. Try to figure this that's out. Exactly what he looked he's like. like. I'll go get them. He was like, "Okay, that's fine. I will take you to all the met." You could just see him like whirling and him, go- and then oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, <laughs> yeah, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. <laughs> no, that that and, part and was then- amazing. What, what was it like then fighting uh, with, with Osford though? And, and like we said, you do end up killing him off then. Uh, what, yeah. what was that? What was that fight scene? Like he's, that was pretty cool. He's just, he's just so like calm. He's just such mm-hmm. a, um, he's such just a, 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 Ewan's just such like a calm presence and that he had, um, and uh, it was just really like, cause you're really close to someone because, because as in physically close, cause you're, you know, you so, and the whole day there was like, we we didn't really we didn't really talk a lot. We, we we just we just knew we just knew what was happening, and it was like a really the whole day had like this calm focus about mm. it, and that for me it was a calm focus. But I think for the cast and the crew it was like a, there was like a sadness as well sure. that that this is happening. But then it and and then I just I knew where I I knew where I'd have to go to like believably make it look like what i'm doing and that requires me to have like a level of like of focus and calm as well because i'm like i'm going red like i'm you know that thing i said about when you have to fight but you have to be you have to have the emotion but be calm at the same time Mm, right so i knew i knew that i would have to get to that place where i'm like my adrenaline spiked and i'm fucking through the roof but then be calm enough to be telling the story so that and it's it's like a, a bit like a in my head it's like a sport when it's like that because you've got to like juggle a couple of different things but he but um but once that once that scene had done but also i find i find that stuff relatively easy so i, I was like i can get to there quite easily and, and, and then but they um but once that scene once that scene was done and our fight scene was done as well which we worked mm-hmm. we worked really hard on but it was it, it, you couldn't see a lot of it but there was um i also got a sword to the face i don't know who it was from but oh. it was like literally in my face and I had this big thing but they um but after that scene was like the real stuff you know like the the real uh, like the, it just felt so heavy it was like yeah Mark and you and and ryan and alona they was just it was just such an they got they got to the place straight away that was like i think they did it in two takes and wow. he was him him dying and they were just all really honestly the whole day with the calm and the focus thing the whole day everyone was really present the whole day so no one was like everyone was just happened to be on their a game so when when he was dying in their arms they were just all there all reacting in the moment 
and we all knew I was sitting there watching it and all the cast were really quiet and we just knew it was like oh they've they've nailed that like that right. it was just one of those things where like straight away it's like yeah they have they have delivered that yeah and, um, and, and they've been on the show so long working together that I'm sure there was real emotion behind it too like I yeah. guess we're losing our friend on the show here um too and and you and Mitchell of course killed that scene with when he was dying I mean that was yeah it, like, he, he was always going to like, like, oh he yeah just, he's got like a, a reputation as like being like one of the best like you know like he he you, you just it was more like oh I'm excited to see how he does this and he just obviously he just absolutely delivered it absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. But we know there is justice uh, for the guy who, <laughs> you know, the guy who did Wait. kill Osford. Unfortunately, though, you, your character does die in the show. Could we talk a little bit about the scene when you have been captured, Aylesworth and Aylfled and, yeah. or not Aylfled, um, Aylfwyn and... Um, Edith. Aylfwyn, Aylesworth and, and Edith. Edith. Oh, e yep. Yeah, yeah. And Edith. The, the they, Ailes so threw I, you off. Yeah. The they, that, was, me. that was filmed in... It's only the Elves. That was... um. <laughs> That was filmed in right at the end. And it was really nice okay. because I've been just with Adrian for a long time and, and with a couple other people. And I hadn't really got to, got to be with those guys yet. And we were all mm -hmm. really good friends by that point. So it was just, it was the most fun day. I, I, it was a couple of days, actually. It was, I think three or four, or whatever. But they, that, that in my head is like the period of like me just, I just, I just enjoyed all of it. And, and, and also I knew I was, I knew I was, but yeah, but then the bit we were the bit we were we were thinking about was the was the Ed was how Edith is gonna die because that scene is tough as fuck and Stefan Ste Stephanie um Steph sorry she's she had to like have me on top of her strangling her for like six hours and and I, I'm not I'm not like a liked man yeah right. <laughs> so like I'm like. That she, so and and as well the 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 physical sensation of of doing that and then the weight of me and after a fight scene after a long day and then so she was she she was just amazing she and and and, and just to keep on delivering like the shock and stuff so get it working working with her was so cool and and um eliza is like literally like the the friendliest most open yeah. person like, in the world as soon as I joined and I came in, I was I didn't really know anyone. We're at, we're at one of like the like a shindig, and she was just straight away, "Hey, how you doing? Oh. Welcome!" Literally like that, and and took me under her wing, and she's just so lovely, and also she's so much better than she thinks she is as well. Like, yeah, she, she, she's, she's good. She, she yeah. kills it. And, and, she yeah, kills. she. And it was really nice that she was. There's a couple of those three are really funny together with fear as well. Um, mm -hmm. they. It's like I love the idea that they were on the campsite and they were laughing. Like there was stuff. It made it yeah. really like, um, you know, and the, the guy who the, the director now, Anthony Phillips, and he's uh, he, he is hilarious as well. So the whole the whole the whole day we were just laughing our heads off, and it was it was, it was great. Yeah, Eliza Laugh. had some comedy beats with that. Like when she was uh, like, I I know how to, I know I'm skilled with a dagger and like her yeah. thrusts. <laughs> like you'd see her like practicing. Like very rigid, yeah. yeah. Hang on, this is my death. <laughs> this should be serious. I know. But it was like, yeah, it was. Um, there was there was so much there was so much humor to be found in the fact that I, this big, horrible, tough guy, gets killed by a grandma on yeah. the, on the show. Yeah. You yeah. know, and I, was like, I read it and I was like, you mean you mean there's no there's no big big fight? It's like no, you get to be killed by the queen. And I was like, okay, yeah, that's cool. Well, hey, that was sweet. It's, it was sweet. it was That's cool and her yeah, go scene ahead, with that it was, it was funny and then later on when she's when she's talking with uh uh who is she talking with i forget uh oh uh edward's new wife uh yeah. she, he, when she was like she's like oh i'm very t my bones are tired from um you know then and she's like <laughs> yeah, yeah. oh because i know you're yeah. old because i killed a man with my bare hands yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is so good like she she really she she completely deserves the fact that she would do that and she just sells it like hard and I, it just makes sense it's like it's almost like he does because my, my character's obviously a bad guy so he doesn't get to go out in a blaze of glory he gets to be killed by the three women that he just arrogantly assumed would be really easy to 
to kidnap. And they're oh, like, right. mm, we're going to jump you, set you on fire, then stab you through the neck. Right. Like, oh. Yeah, you get hit with like a, with a torch or something. Like yeah. They, yeah. Was there like, was an earlier version where I was covered in flames in my face. Oh, and it was like, what? Yeah, it was, you should have been on really, fire when you were choking. Oh my that would have been amazing. God. Just, I thought I was. <laughs> Yeah. So I was like, so, but then, but I, I think it was, would have been. I don't know if your face can continue being on fire. I think that was probably only one way the, to find out. Way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah but it was, the, you know, Eliza when she came on our podcast, we asked like, "What do you want from your character moving forward?" And and she said something to the effect like, "I'd love a, I'd love to like a battle moment or something like that. Like I'd fight. like to use a weapon." Yeah. I can't remember exactly what she said. So we were like so excited to see her. Like, oh, she actually had a moment. Yes. Where she killed yeah. someone, but um, but what was it like to like get stabbed like that in, in the back of the neck? How they how'd you guys do that? So the um the a lot of it was just I don't know really. So she 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 was on she was behind me and obviously right. I had no knife, but I could feel her um coming behind me. So when she did that, it's just kind of like working out. I'm um, with um Leventi, who's the, the stunt guy, like working yeah. out how how your neck would go and like what you would do. And it was really, there was like a technical aspect of it, but what was mm. the, the, um, the pressure was, the pressure was like, we were right at the end of the day and we had to, Steph could only really get covered in blood like twice because it just takes okay. so long. It takes like, and like 45 minutes to clean her up and get her back looking like she hasn't been covered in blood. So we only had like one or two attempts mm. and then I had to make sure that happens at the same time as um, someone was pulling a, like a, I think a, like a blood explosion thing. So the camera was like here. Uh, so it goes interesting. And that goes, and then I had to roll over and dying and dying is like, it's not that dying's hard. It's just that I've in that play, the Vikings at Helgeland to bring yeah. it back. I, I had to die every night on stage for like, 60 days and i and, and i got i got better at it and i worked out i think i worked out a way to not make it look shit but they uh, but um but essentially that my death scene isn't about me i, I think i'm like i'm like the the 10th like uh the, the 10th member of that scene because it's like it's makeup it's costume it's the stunt guys it's steph it's um it's anthony with the camera it's Eliza doing the work. I, I, I'm, I'm basically, I'm there to literally just deliver on a small movement that, that everyone else will sell. The, the, um, the, the only, the really tough bit was we had to do ADR afterwards. You know, we had to, we had to go to a studio and record some of the dialogue after. And um, Anthony was like, Harry, I need, I need a death noise. And I was like, what? It was like, you know, like after you've been stabbed in the neck, you know, your final breath. So it was just me and him in a studio going like, uh, uh, for like for like an hour trying to work out how long. Like, does that sound like his last breath? And then obviously, <laughs> you, if you listen, you can. It's so faint, but I, I rewinded it and I was like, I want, I need to hear okay. that. Okay, need to hear it. I worked. Everybody, on that. everybody watching this, go back to that part and rewind because uh, so that was hard work put into it. So I, I was yeah. though I was I loved again I love for uh, Eli's character ails with uh, what that that whole thing for her and everything that came after but I was yeah. kind of hoping that there would be a showdown with you and Finn in um, yeah. as a revenge that's one thing mm-hmm. I was kind of hoping for I was like I would I would have loved to have seen that fight because like you're both like a brawler kind of dudes um you know with with just two different personalities so i would i would have loved to have seen something like that though it would have been a good match i think i yeah i would have i doing that with mark would have been the best thing ever and he was kind of i think he was kind of he wanted that as well obviously i wanted it but but obviously obviously but it was really nice because mark was like he 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 was kind of going for that as well like he and there was there's little little moments there's little moments where you it's kind of hard to notice but he would um when when osva is is dead mark hmm. mark is eyeing me so i i run off i run off and i turn around and i look at him and he look he looks at me and we have a real like mark has to make a decision about staying with this obviously it's not like that it's more like fuck you i'm going to kill you yeah and then i kind of see him and i walk off and then later in the battle when i'm in the shield wall yeah the person who i'm the person who i'm looking at is mark and mm. mark 
Mark's just had a massive fight and he's looking at me because he's, I think, I'm not speaking for him, but he's made, Mark made the decision that it's not, it's not as much Ethelhelm, it's me. He, he, like, I know he, he knows that Ethelhelm is the guy who ordered that, yeah. but he wants specific revenge on me. You're the guy and who I'm, drove the knife. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so that's right. what it, it looked like to me. He was calling out Ethelhelm come fight me, but it looked like he was like you two were staring at each other when I was watching it. Um, that's yeah. what we, I thought we, too. We, we were like we so that so we were both we were both pushing that wow. <laughs> we were, i love that for every reason we were both we were both had the same idea but i think both secretly pushing like a massive showdown between between me and him which, but he's he's a he's a unit like i like yeah that it, it would yeah like i'm i, I he, it would have been great but also he's a brilliant brilliant uh on-screen fighter he's had mm -hmm loads of experience and they give him they give him loads of stuff and he just eats it up he's 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 there's the, in the lead up to um the me and osworth killing scene if you, if you keep if you go back to it mark running down a hill kicks someone over a table like punches yes. someone in the face like jumps over a horse and, like elbows another guy and then yeah. slides him. He, he he and he did it with ease like he's he's brilliant to watch so i would have oh that's cool it was awesome. It would have been a cool fight scene, but I, I would, I'd assume I would have, I would have had my, uh, my work cut out basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, That's I was awesome. just, I don't know. I had my head like the scene from the Patriot where, uh, met like Mel Gibson ends up killing, uh, I forget, you know, that uh, uh, Jason. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That, that's that's the kind of revenge I had in my head when I saw you two staring at each other down. I'm like this is what I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see just fit in, just like the the short dagger things they use. Oh, man. But it was yeah. still it was still uh, sweet death. It was still sweet death. Yeah, yeah, that was super cool. That was super cool. What were some of your? Uh, what are some things you love about Brazil? So I had this running joke that like, with a, uh, there was two. There was two really. I, I mean, I loved. So I, basically, I loved him from the moment I started reading about him. I was like, yeah, you want to? You want me to play an assassin in the eight hundreds? Fuck yeah! Like, and and then it became. I be, I don't know whether they. I started to, to to deliver stuff quite sarcastically and it became this running joke from, with me and a couple of others that like, I'm just telling jokes for myself. <laughs> like Ethelhelm has never acknowledged or laughed once, you know, like <laughs> yeah. that, the monk one is like silver is a God all men serve, but, um, but no one cares. <laughs> no one's laughing. So Bresso, I worked out that he's one of those guys that just tells jokes for his own benefit. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, and I, I just found that I found that such a that really helped me because I was like, oh, I'm just doing this because I find this funny. But um, but he became more. I don't know whether it was written that way or how I was deciding it, but it just it's, it felt like, oh, they understand that I'm quite sarcastic, and it, it, it became slightly funnier. I think as he as he went on. But they um even though I even though I think I started playing it more serious, I think I still could have I, I think I could have hung on maybe a bit longer to the comedic aspect. But the um but the the um the other really funny thing which doesn't kind of you can't kind of work it out is I'm I'm really good mates with uh with Harry who plays Ethelstan. Right. And he was one of the first people I met and he was just so lovely and we just got on like easily straight away and we worked out that all I all my character does is just spy on Edward Stan for like yeah. basically six of the episodes but I'm spying on him in really obvious places that are very close to him so in, in there's so many scenes there's so many scenes where he's here and I'm just kind of staring at him like it's like no he is directly in front of you he would see you <laughs> so he, and th th there's there's a couple of screenshots we've got and we've I've like we zoomed in and it's just me just kind of giving him the evils like slowly <laughs> in, the background, in like a where's Waldo kind of way. But um, so I love and I loved working with him. He was he's just like effortlessly like good. Yeah. He was just and he taught me loads actually, which I which I wasn't necessarily expecting because he's a bit younger than I am, but he was just he was so great to be around. But um but yeah. Yeah, so I, the, but the stuff I loved was um yeah, I suppose. I just loved all of it. Really, I was just so happy to be there. That's awesome. Now, your character—I feel like your character is like very unique in the Last Kingdom world. Like, uh, you came in; it's original, and there's been a ton of other great characters, but yours was very original. Um, but was was there anything that made it difficult to play your character? Some of what Bressel does. A lot of what Bressel does was was 
and it's important in these shows is like if you look it's like a triangle and Uhtred is at the top mm -hmm. and it's really important that you're all serving his story because as a fan of the show it's about Uhtred you know like right. it's about, it can be about lots of things but he so you are you're serving this kind of story and I, I it took me a second to kind of um to realize that you some of some of the scenes are important that almost the number one thing is that you're 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 helping tell the story so it was kind of hard to then still feel like you're delivering a character when there's nothing there's no there's nothing about me you know there's, there's I, I don't say you don't really understand where I'm from what I've done or that kind of thing you're just serving the story which is so important but I right. come from doing I come from playing uh I actually come from playing Macbeth. I played Macbeth like three or four times, and okay. you've got like what a thousand lines of Macbeth, and it's mm -hmm. like, here is your personality, here is okay. your your character. So I, I had to really, to, to hopefully to imbue him with a with a personality and a character. It was like like I said that building the backstory and building all that world and deciding whether why he finds this funny and deciding where he's coming from and deciding like why is he why is he enjoying um like poking around this priest like why is that weird phrase but why why is he <laughs> like why is he, why is he enjoying these these moments so much or like where is he why is he that arrogant about this why you know why can why is this something that he's like oh and i love doing this like so, so, so that was that was hard but that was also that was why you why i'm doing it you know that right absolutely yeah absolutely. but i didn't i didn't realize how uh, some people have said have said how like how smug he is and i was like oh no i didn't realize i was doing it like that you know <laughs> like the, the but the, the, there was like i did on purpose there was he decided to these situations that people normally hate he mm. loves yeah mm. that's interesting yeah, it's very interesting. How have the fans been reacting to you? Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, TLK fans are very passionate people. And sometimes it's hard for them to differentiate between a person and the character they play. So got, have you I've been getting couple, anything? Yeah, I've, got, I've had a couple of bad ones, actually. Really? Oh, no. um, yeah, yeah. I'm like, uh, <laughs> I was so tempted before it came out. It's just someone was like, <laughs> someone messaged me and they were like, yeah, man, fuck you. You killed us first. I'll just go, you know what? <laughs> you. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're next. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah, next. Like, like they, I just I was to deal with it. So instead of like, instead of tiptoeing around, I was like, I'm going to find out where you live. You go fuck yourself. But they, um, <laughs> but I've, yeah, I've had a couple of them and obviously I just ignore them. But they, um, but the, right. the, the majority of people is, uh, I hated your character so much. I loved it. And I was like, right. You know, I, I, I didn't realize it took me a second because I was like, oh, but no, but I, that's the perfect reaction. It's the perfect reaction. Yeah. You know, it, it, I someone, think so. if you enjoyed hating him, it's like, great. Yeah. That's how I felt. That's yeah. how I felt during the show. And I, I love characters like that. I mean, some of my favorite characters in any movie or show are the ones who are the ones causing trouble, you know? Yeah. And uh, I thought you did an excellent job of that. Like, really did that. That's one of the things we loved about The Last Kingdom uh, when we first got into it. Even the like the really small roles that were in like the first few seasons that we when we first watched it. Like, there's a priest at the beginning of season two um, that like he starts the rebellion at yeah. at yeah. that Bianca. It was a yeah, Richard Rankin think? plays him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. From from Outlander, we didn't realize it at the time though. But yeah. um, <laughs> just this tiny role. But it was awesome. Um, and then, of course, I mean, you're, you're not a tiny role at all. You're, I mean, in the majority yeah. of the season. Uh, but, I mean, they could have just had some bad guy who had no lines and um, just came and went. Uh, but you, I think you had a really awesome role and uh, what you did with it. I was, like I said, I was really waiting for the, the, the Finn in versus Brezel fight. But it was still great. Again, still great outing, though. Still great death. I'm not, I'm not trying to sell it too much, but. Yeah, I, I I kept on I I this was like a step up for me. Like I'd done loads of theatre and I'd done so I knew that kind of stuff. But and I'd done enough TV to be comfortable and things. But I we would get the we would get the episodes one by one, and I kept on um kept on reading them. And I kept on going like, oh shit! Like it was all yeah. it was becoming it was a massive thing for me, and I was I was just really 
grateful with that I've got the um I got the opportunity to kind of keep on you know staying in there and stuff and and like and I yeah I died in episode seven but I was like in my head I I wasn't getting past episode one you know so I was yeah. to be to be to be still hanging around okay. like bad smell I was like cool yeah this is I'm fine and, and, and allow, allow me to just he because Bressel doesn't have a death wish but he just doesn't care yeah right so I and it helped me like with my I was like great it was the opposite to not caring it was like this is all good all of this right. is great like whatever I get I'm like brilliant I would th- this is amazing so I was I wasn't like I, I wasn't like trying to hold on to anything or trying to imbue it with anything apart from like this might be the last time he's there. Okay, cool. Let's just do what I want and, and, and have fun with it. That's awesome. You, you mentioned Harry Gilby too earlier and how you were yeah. good friends with him. We, we, we chatted with him last week. Um, a couple days ago. A couple, yeah, couple days ago. It's, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, But he was telling us there was a, there was a scene where um, they're like, oh, we, we need to get the hat off of Ethelstan. And you were just like, I'll just kick you. <laughs> yeah. I was just take it. No, you you're said you'll, you. I'll just kick you. Like I, oh, I guess yeah. that wasn't part of it originally. Um, yeah, I just wanted any 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 opportunity just to kick him in the face. I think that was just a real. Yeah, <laughs> and you probably tried again later too, right? Like, he, uh... the kick was so bad. Like I'm just going to ruin it. But like that was one of the uh, first things I did. And and Harry was Harry Harry had just been on the floor like doing like uh, what's it called um my tie on the floor with like two men. And he no. was just nailing this whole fight, oh, and he God. would because he, he, that's yeah. that's you have to do the fight, but you you put you, the the actor brings obviously the stunt team is amazing, and the two guys on the floor just throwing themselves about were were awesome, but it was Harry's doing Harry's just selling it, and he's just he's just he was covered in mud, and he was throwing himself around, and he's really like he, he was just really believable watching it, and um, yeah. and then my job is to do one kick in the face, and then. And I, I did it. I was on this hill, right? And yeah. the, the, shoe, the shoes that you wear are just like a piece of leather. There's no rubber. That, so so mm-hmm. stay, staying on the hill became like a hard thing to do. <laughs> and as Harry was in the rain and mud doing all this thing, and as soon as it came to me, I had one kick and I just completely fell over. I just I, oh. I, I like volleyed him, went whoop, and then just, just <laughs> hit the deck. And they were like, yes, yeah, so we should probably, we're going to go back and do that again because you just... <laughs> He just, and it was just funny because his choreography was like 30, 30 bits strong and I had one thing to do and I just end up just completely fucking up. And I was oh, like, no. I'm, I'm so sorry. Let's go again. But um, but yeah, the kick, the kick was also, he was like, a lot of the times we, we improvised the, 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 like there was a, a couple of kicks, like it should have been one kick, but then Harry kept turning around and looking at me and doing that. And when he'd come around and look at me and do that, I'd just kick him in the face and he'd just take it. And um, there's a, there's also one of his best moments is I well, know he's got loads of good moments, but oh yeah, there's a there's a bit when they um, I've forgotten it's in it's uh, I've forgotten what place they're ransacking. Oh, it's the um, it's Sig Triggers, it's Etherwich. Mm. You know when they mm. when they, directly when they come out the um, did he tell you this? I think when they when when they come out the poo sewers or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Arnis is like dealing with someone. And he puts him to the floor, but then he gets up again, and you see Edwistan turn around and just rugby tackle him to the yeah. floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Genuinely, just did that. Yeah, he told us that <laughs> we were talking. Yeah. I'm like, so you were just like taking Tackling people down. Someone told him to do that. <laughs> and he told me that he told me that story, and I was like, I don't think that's okay. I think that's yeah. We were like... <laughs> I was like, I think you should apologize to that poor stunt man. <laughs> he just he was just thought the fight was over. And <laughs> It was like don't get in a don't get in a fake fight with Harry. You'll get hurt. Basically. <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious. That's really funny. He's got that's that really amazing like amazing like belief in himself, and 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 he knows why he's doing it, and he he knows like he just really understands it from like a filmic point of view, and he it's not even a thing with him. He's like obviously I'm going to give everything to this, right? But, like right. it's just a given. It's a given that like he won't think twice about turning around and rugby tackling him because he knew that it needed that. Yeah. So, yeah. so if you split a second, and, because and you, his thought process was, oh, that guy's getting up. Slam. <laughs> That's it. It's, <laughs> it's, it's pretty funny. Harry's just like, I'm not letting out. anyone stand. 
<laughs> yeah. Her- Harry, we're done. <laughs> cut, <laughs> cut. <laughs> I didn't even learn that because my thought process would probably be like, Does it, should we? You know, but he was like, no, that guy's about to stand up. I'm going to kill him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So I, that's that's a big it was a big lesson for me in terms of like you know when, when you say cut you finish and I, I am i am good with that but mm-hmm. he is the master apparently <laughs> yeah apparently yeah, yeah. playing now, the whistle now, yeah yeah now harry you mentioned you became a big fan of the last kingdom you know one, you know once you auditioned for the role and everything um did you have any favorite characters before season five here anybody that there was a lot. I'm I'm really easy in terms of like I kind of go like you just imagine yourself being Uhtred, right? So I, yeah, so mm-hmm. it was it's really hard to for, for me to not be like wow, he, he's the he's the coolest, and he just is. He just is yes. as a he directed me in in episode two and Alex. Yeah, how was just, that? Yeah. He, well, he's just so such a positive, happy guy, and and, and he's so, like charming and hideously good looking and ripped, and you're like fuck you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like they um, it, it, he's just like, in the, somehow he's like Uhtred. He's really like commanding, and he's a natural leader, and he's like, right. he's really good with everyone on set, and everyone just loves him. And he, and if you're if you're the lead in something, it's called the lead for a reason because you lead, right? So you decide, mm-hmm. you have the power to decide what the set is like and what the atmosphere is like. And because he's happy and effortless, and he he works his ass off, the set is like that. You know, and it stems, it comes, it comes down from him. And there was a reputation right. going into this that the cast had a, had one of the, weirdly, I've never had this, but they had a reputation as being a really friendly cast. Right. And no one said that. It's not like someone has said, these guys are fucking horrible to me before with the cast, but it just so happened I'd heard that I think I was going somewhere and said, oh, you have such a good time. They're all really great people. And they are. And they're, they're yeah, so awesome. They're, they're just awesome. But so Uhtred, Uhtred for me was, was the man, but there was a couple of others. Obviously, Leverich was the, like the yeah, you know he season and, one. And, and, yeah, their 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 friendship was um. I loved I loved their friendship and 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 that kind of that kind of that kind of got me through. There was um. I've forgotten I've forgotten what he was called, but he made such an impact in in the first. The first season, you know, when they randomly they just go ransack a village, and you're just like, "Yo, this is mm-hmm. fun," and they come up against the, like potentially one of the scariest actors I've ever seen in my life. Oh um, yes, um, Blood. Was he Blood? What? No, no was, um, Scorpa. Like, Scorpa. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought that that performance stayed with me for the whole of my for the whole of the time I was out there. He was just terrifying. Yeah, just we, we always said we wish he was in it more. Like, yeah, uh, just. I think, I think that that was. Just the, I think had they wrote it now and he came in and he delivered mm. that, I think he would have been like a huge. But he was just, yeah, because he was just so. Like, it was just so intimidating. I, I loved that. I loved that performance. His smile, like, like you have a smile when he talked to you. Yeah, um, like all the time. Like that, he knew. It was, it was amazing. My my favorite, and I said it to James a lot, was was Aldhelm. Oh yeah. Yeah, because he, I just, I love the idea of someone bad turning good. I've always yeah, he has loved an amazing that. arc, amazing arc. Yeah. And you just, totally. you just, you just completely root for him, and he's so, is so, he's just this guy, this selfless guy that's just decided to give his life to um to Ethelfled, and uh, he, he's um, I loved everything James was doing in terms of his performance and stuff, and mm-hmm. it, that um, he, and there's a, one of my favorite bits is when she's just, which is just. Obviously, they've just had they've just had sex at the start of season whatever. Yeah. And now, <laughs> four, I think. Oh yeah, and he's out by the horses. Oh man, yeah. and, and just, he just walks up naked with the sword on his shoulder after oh. doing <laughs> the so woman he, he likes. Yeah, he's completely in love with her, but to the point where he's such a good guy that he yeah. his friendship oh. trumps the love, which is just heartbreaking and amazing. And then yeah, and he just walks up naked, just probably with a boner and like his sword. <laughs> like, hey, how's it going? Hey, your lady upstairs, and he's just like, he knows that it's okay. He knows that Uhtred's a good guy, and he's like, yes, I'll protect her while you two, while you two have sex. But they, um, but they, <sighs> he's, but he's, yeah, that's heartbreaking. And he goes, he he mentions it to her. It's, it's something along the lines of, you know, that this isn't jealousy. And then um, Millie Brady yeah. says. 
it's so nice and she says it back and she's like of course i know that you you do not act out of jealousy and it's such a it's so well written but it's such a lovely deepness in their relationship yeah they, they, and they've got they've got such a special bond over the show that's one of my favorite um relationships i think that's a that's a great point and i wondered too you mentioned about how aldhelm was a bad character who turned good there were times i wondered about your character just the way you kept second guessing ethelhelm and it's yeah. not that he was going to turn good but that maybe he was not going to be as loyal to ethelhelm anymore but then obviously that changes once you find Aelflood. but was there any of that like thinking oh your character might yeah might someday not follow ethelhelm so when when the the breakdown for the role was like he he um he could be one of uh utrid's men like it said, it said they didn't say he. They didn't say they, they wasn't promising that. They were just just trying to describe what he's like. Gotcha. And they were saying like if he could, he would fit quite nicely into Uhtred's like gang. Right. So it was always like I was always aware that um, Arnus had the great turn. Mm-hmm. But then, so it was in the back. Of, it was in the back of my head. I was like, oh, this would be cool. But then, um, but also I, I wasn't. I knew that he was a gun for hire and I knew that he enjoyed it and that kind of stuff. But then it wasn't really until I read episode five that I was like, Oh no, he's a bad guy. He's right. Like there is no coming back from like racially segregating a town and then massacring. A, yeah. A hundred people in the yeah. Like, was, no, no, uh, he's a bad guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so once I knew that it kind of like, it helped feed into, um, because because ultimately yeah he's doing a job you know he's just doing a job yeah. exceptionally well and then yeah. it becomes like no he's going too far you can't come back from that and um but yeah but that would have been, you're right that would have been would have been really cool but I think he um essentially he went too far <laughs> yeah yeah I mean he snapped like you said he snapped at that moment with Elflin but uh... yeah and he's not he's like he's inherently he's inherently gone he's bad you know just, yeah yeah that's it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there was no uh, comeback after that, <laughs> especially oh, after, oh. especially after killing Osprey. I was like, nope, yep, uh, this is this is no redemption. <laughs> I literally remember specifically saying to to um to one of my mates, I was like, yeah, I'm wondering, I was just wondering whether I was a bad guy. Then I was like, no, no, you you are a bad guy. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you definitely are. But <laughs> fans, remember, Harry Anton is not Brezel. Okay, so so lay off. <laughs> it was pain. if you would if you would stop the camera, you'd be like me me doing that to baby monk i was like no oh no, man no. i'm so sorry <laughs> just such a good character <laughs> yeah it's nice to work oh, with God. you <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Yeah. <laughs> you mean so much to the family <laughs> that was that was the equivalent of me just ruining any kind of love that i would have for the fan base as well just like he was a metaphor for me just stabbing them and like oh. that's you you're never going to come back from this but, um yeah hopefully people i don't know i've assumed i'd be booed a lot and well, that's fine you know we love, hey, we hey, loved your cool. character we loved your no character. i loved your character totally so remember that I, it's always going to come back to like i've done this in front of four people before so just being on being on the big screen and doing it with Another big screen, the small screen, but doing it with them. It's like, oh, yeah, you can boo me as much as you want. I fucking love it. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, do you, do you have, have any? any... Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, it sounds oh, like we're asking the same question. Colin. I think so. Do you want to say it together? <laughs> <Let's> say... What? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, let's. You go. No, you go. go okay. Do you have any other um, future goals? Anything else in your career that you really want to achieve? Yeah, there's loads of stuff. This, you have to work like walk a weirdly fine line between wanting loads of stuff and also being happy with with anything that comes comes your way. But there's there's aims that there's definitely aims that I have and okay. Um, but this this was this was definitely one of them. But I, I saw the um my dream is like kind of a little bit. It's a great film called the. Uh, I just saw it the other day. It was uh, the Peanut Butter Falcon, okay. and also but or like you know mud as well. Mm-hmm. There's like a character in like I've always loved the like South like Southern America, like Mark Twain, that kind of and 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 those films that are like not uh, what independent independent movies that are just you know five star films. I just I I, I that's that's where I'd love to I, I I want one of them basically I, I, and to be because because those are films that I like I like deeply love 
and I am. Um, I'd love to be. I'd love to be a part of of one of them, and 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 do like do like a couple like six months out in like the um, you know, out in the kind of middle of nowhere, and and just be just be making making a film. I just want. I just want to do this cool. for the for the for the future. Basically, cool. Awesome. What else? What else? Are you interested in? What are you watching now? Reading or movies well, just, you're seeing? I, um, my, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm reasonably like eclectic. My mates would say I'm not eclectic at all, but they, um, I like, I just saw, just saw the Batman, which is pretty amazing. Oh, yeah, and um, I haven't seen it yet. My, Steve said, Steve said it's like almost as good as the Dark Knight. I mean, you, not that you can compare them, but he said yeah. it's that good. So well, how would you I'm, put it? How would you rank them? How would you put them? Uh, it's, it's um, it, I, I, yeah, that's such a big question. Have I done that? Have I? It's it was close. Dark Knight, Dark Knight wins. I actually even really, if it's even if it can be mentioned in the same sentence, it's going to be an amazing movie. Because yeah. I mean, Dark Knight is like my all time favorite. So I weirdly prefer Batman Begins. I I I, I just think okay. as I'm yeah, it's like it's it, I just I've seen Batman Begins like a million times. I, I the Dark Knight is a better film, but Batman Begins to me is like I think Batman Begins is underrated. I don't think it's I don't think it's weird. I think Batman Begins is actually an awesome film. But I think yeah. I appreciated it more after Dark Knight came out for some reason. Yeah, when I definitely. went back and re- I don't know why. Um, but but I'm actually I'm struggling at the moment because I, I, I I've just so I've just watched season five of Rick and Morty, which is oh fair. yes, yeah. We're big Rick and Morty fans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I thought it I thought it was like it, it found at the end the the, the last. The last couple of episodes are just amazing. I, I love, I, I love uh, Dan Harmon. I love Community. And oh, I love, you know, um, I love Rick and Morty. Basically, I, I they're geniuses. Yeah, they, yeah, are, they ended are, too that... quick. Went too quick. It's a quick. It's always too quick. It's always too quick. And then we got to wait. I don't think we'll have to wait as long. There was like a gap between one of the seasons. It was like a really long wait, and then they signed a contract for hundred more seasons of Rick and Morty. Hundred more seasons. I don't know how long it was. But... Seasons on your TV. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but they, so I'm in the market. I'm in the market for a new program. That's basically what I'm saying. I just but the, one of the, the the best thing I've seen this year is Succession. Though that's okay. I haven't seen it yet, but I've been recommended by many people. Yeah, I love the soundtrack yeah. to Succession. So I'm, so, I've heard the soundtrack. But I keep talking about. I've got. I've got. Um, uh, uh, Jeremy Strong is the, just the kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm, I was. I'm obsessed with him. Basically, I, I think he's. I think he's one of the best ever. He just, he just, the, the amount of stuff he's doing by not doing anything, he's like, at the moment, he's he's still probably my favorite. Like, you know, like you go through phases, but at the moment, I'm like, right. he's the absolute bollocks, basically. So it's, it's getting, getting something, getting something like that, getting something that would be like acting wise, like a huge challenge that will just crush me. That's kind of what I'm after. <laughs> uh, have, have you seen Ozark? That's just crush. Have you seen Ozark? <laughs> no, is that no? That's that's a good one. We both watch. Would recommend. Would recommend. Yeah, I think you um, might be into that then, based off I've what you're seen, saying. Yeah, I've just seen a recent development, so it might be hard for me to take him seriously. <laughs> Dude, it I is the same thing. But I like, thought the same thing, and it's and weirdly, he's like the same character he is in everything, but it freaking works. Yeah, <laughs> like, for real. For I don't real. know how. It feels like it's like, Jason Bateman as a money launderer you know like yeah but it, like it yeah. makes sense it doesn't even feel yeah. like he like has lines it feels like they just film him <laughs> like and he's just yeah, like yeah, uh, exactly. yeah okay yeah and he's amazing he's amazing he's brilliant actually his uh his delivery but, but joe like, <laughs> as good as he is like, fucking will on that is just oh yeah, he's, yeah the, the first like about think... two or three seasons of arrested development they're they're gold they're gold yeah uh, that he yeah, he he is outrageous. Every single literally his delivery. I don't even think I don't think he was doing it. He doesn't he would they weren't we wouldn't have been aware that they were making what like one of the best memes ever, which is, made a huge mistake. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just I, I can't go over how good it was. So good. Yeah. Yeah. Now is there anything you want to say to the Last Kingdom fans here? Um just how sorry I am. Oh. <laughs> That's not what I meant. But <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't my idea to kill Baby Monk, and I was devastated. devastated. He should have just got out of the way. He should have got out of the way. You know. That's what... <laughs> yeah. 
Didn't want to do it. Didn't want to do it. Finn and, but, Finn and should have come and saved him. I mean, it's uh, no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, but I, I, I'm just, I'm just really happy to be, uh, to be a part of it, and I, and I'm, and I, I'm, a, I, I'm a fan as well. So I, uh, it's just, just really happy the whole thing. Just really, really, I'm um, really proud of work everyone did, and cool. it was great, it was an amazing experience. That's awesome. But thank you so much, Harry, again for coming on and chatting with yeah. us. This was great. Uh, we're, we're loving the uh, last season of The Last Kingdom here, and uh, you were an excellent addition, and, and your character oh, yeah. was awesome, too. Amazing. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, listeners, you know, please um, let us know what you thought of Brezel in uh, The Last Kingdom. Comment below and um, tell us what you think of uh, Harry's job. Uh, and please subscribe, follow on Instagram and everything, and uh, we'll be out with more of these. But for now... Uh, Bye. Like we always say, goodbye and destiny is all. <laughs>